totally different direction towards targeting their affluent customers, which is what Amex has always been based on, and expanding the pie rather than trying to grab more pie. And they were able to go geographically from 11 to 29 countries. They were to add uh, college students and women. They were able to improve their technology to improve their efficiencies. They were also improving their outlets in terms of, and back then, there was very little that you could use credit cards for. And then they expanded what you could use credit cards for. So all that. And it's not in this article, but in case you're not a student of business, uh, Lou Gerstner proved he was one, he was not a one-trick pony, because he went on and resurrected IBM from when they were about ready to implode. And they made him, he made him a world beater in a matter of a few years. So uh, he really was a genius. Uh, Pioneer uh, has done some things that, uh, you know, kind of in that same way about setting direction that I think has really helped us tremendously as an organization. You know, we shut down the Gulf operations and sold our assets before BP managed to blow it up. Um, and which was luck partially, but it was also a realization of the risks that we were incurring and that we weren't adequately rewarded for it. Um, we shut down our rigs at the end of 08 when prices were still sky high because we saw kind of the crash coming on the futures, and, and uh, we took a lot of heat for it, but it turned out to be a genius move. Um, we moved into a more oily environment um, when it became apparent that oil was the option, and, uh, and we've cut operational costs relentlessly these last couple of years without cutting headcount. So, uh, you know, Pioneer in the last couple of years has done a lot of things to look very, very smart and runs the industry. And uh, as people that all get shares in some form or fashion, we're all grateful for that. Very good. Of those four Pioneer bullets, which ones of those are generally leadership and or management? Top, top three are leadership, the bottom one is management. Definitely. Definitely. And all extremely important working together to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Presenter for Team 5, come on up. <laughs> oh, you are. Sorry, I saw somebody over there. Michael is up. James is our leader, and he delegated to me. Did he empower you to do what you wanted? No, he just told me. All right, our question was, give examples of how you create and cultivate challenging opportunities for employees in your department of vision. Not a whole lot of us in our group were really in sort of a leadership or management type role, so we came up with a few examples of that. Okay. Um, let's see, so first thing was to provide new resources or tools, uh, different software tools to speed things up, especially if the employee was kind of getting swamped, something to kind of get them to be able to get their head above water and also maybe try out something new. Uh, certainly helps uh, set up a bigger picture in terms of what else they can do, what more they can do, rather than just kind of focusing on one little thing. Um, also, to place an employee in a new role, um, instead of just doing this one thing, expanding their role or changing them. I think uh, James said he turned this one guy's job completely or 180 or whatever, just giving him a different direction in some cases. Um, so a <coughs> new role in the same department, with a different duty. Uh, and in some cases, these are make or break moves. It wasn't because we're just making them into guinea pigs or trying something new. It's because if they don't come through, maybe something is going to happen. They're going to let go or move teams or whatever. So it's not always just to kind of inspire them. Sometimes there's a little bit more on the line. Um, and the second part of the question was, uh, how, does your, see, how do your superiors uh, challenge or motivate you. And an example was, was given of uh, one individual being given the opportunity to take an idea presented to a, a manager or a team, and then, all right, that was pretty good, now go and present this in front of a number of vice presidents, executive vice presidents. That was really good, all right, now I want you to present the same thing to some board director people as well. So it was taking an idea, running with it, exposing them to a, a wider and wider audience, and then kind of seeing how you could, your ideas and your work could be um, applied all the way up to the top. Great empowerment. Okay. Any other uh, ideas that you have from your boss or you are giving to your subordinates uh, to challenge them, motivate them? So 
somebody. Come on. I bring donuts every now and then. That's a nice reward. <laughs> <laughs> that the sugar motivates, right? Probably not failing, failing miserably. No. We talk about setting setting goals a lot of times and setting a stretch goal. So, all right, this is zero, what's expect of you, but here's a beat where you can kind of move above and beyond that. Exactly. That was a fantastic was job presenting that. He did. He did. <laughs> That's recognition right there. Charging the cost of us. I know he didn't. Is empowering a leadership or management characteristic? Leadership. Leadership. Delegating is what generally happens. This is a good example of empowerment from what I'm hearing it. But generally, people say they are empowering when what they are really doing is using a wonderful management skill of delegating. And that's needed, but that's mm -hmm. not empowering. What is included in all the criteria needed to when you empower someone? Definitely give them a task, right? That's part of delegating. Give them the authority to make say it that. Give them the tools. Give them the tools. That's not all, and the resources. That's not always there. And tools can encompass many things. Hold on to that one. Come on. Well, not only do you give them the task, but they have to, hopefully they realize that you're giving them something that you're willing to do yourself. And that you're not being unrealistic and giving them something that you are not willing to do. Okay. But aren't you giving them ownership? Keyword. Both of those are right. Ownership to the project. And with that comes what? When you have own it. Responsibility Plus. and you said it before over here. Uh, uh, no, accountability. Accountability. Yeah, and something <coughs> often falls when that's when you say you're empowering, and I'm not saying you. I'm not talking about pioneer. How many times will you hear a company say it could be a, a five-star hotel? We empower our employees. Or in a restaurant, we empower our employees. Uh, check them out sometime. Do they really? Or are they just giving them more work to do? Now, obviously, there's different levels of empowering. If I'm um, working for Hyatt's Best Hotel in D.C., the Palmer, whatever it's called, doesn't matter, and I'm, I'm working for them at the front desk, and they tell me I'm empowered, I'm going to be empowered to a point. I'm probably not going to be empowered to give the top suite that costs whatever a night to this gentleman or this lady just because they didn't like their room, okay? But I may be, be empowered if their hot water wasn't working or the breakfast wasn't delivered hot or whatever to give them something without calling, let me call my supervisor, let me go to the back and see if I can do something about that. No, you want a person to be empowered to a certain point. I'll give you an example of Disney. Disney calls their employees what? Cast members. Cast members, yes, of all levels, whether you are sweeping the streets, whether you are the president and CEO, you are a cast member. Each level has empowerment. So for instance, if Sarah here is working at uh, one of the rides, it's just absolutely the, you know, those rides where you stand in line, and even if you've gone for the fast pass, but uh, She's, she's going to be standing there putting people on and little Susie comes up and she's been standing there and she drops her, you know, one of those $5 ice cream cones goes flipping over and she's just a little girl, a little boy, whatever it might be, crying. What is she at? She's empowered to do. Either give her a, a little ticket to go get one or she goes and gets one for her. They are empowered to do that. Is she empowered if the mother comes up and says, oh, that's just ruined my day because she's upset with this ice cream, please clean it up, blah, 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 and I want my, my day a ticket of $100 reimbursed. No, no, she's not at that level. The next level may have that if something happens so bad that they uh, have management level. So they have different levels, but she has some empowerment. She can also give out a pass if I bring up my two-year-old Make the sign. I don't have a two-year-old anymore, but I bring a two-year-old and he doesn't fit on on um, Tower of Terror. He can't, he's not tall enough to go on that. And he has been looking forward to it. And he's seen it on TV and he's two and a half and oh I can't wait to go on. And he is that much too short. Safety is first for them. 
so they're gonna she's gonna deny him to go there and he is and I've seen this he is sobbing because this has been his biggest thing since seeing Mickey Mouse yesterday what does she do she can give him she'll have a pass with her a certificate as a cast member to give to him for when he returns and he is that much taller for the whole family to come right on up and be a VIP not stand in that line of an hour or whatever whatever now, does that solve it? No, but it gives her some empowerment and generally puts a smile on mom or dad's face too and helps those kids. So there's different levels of empowerment, uh, but it does, all the areas you get is what it's important for. Okay, number uh, seven, please. Institutionalizing a leadership center culture at Pioneer. Our team, um, and you are the chair of the team, and yes. you also are the I was board delegated. I tried to delegate, but they didn't want to do it. <laughs> so he willingly took so the responsibility. Willingly take responsibility. <laughs> um, for the for the organizations, but you got to have good communicators, and you got to relay that to your people all the time. And with that, you also got to pry it out of them. You got to get them to communicate with you as a supervisor. You got to ask them their opinion. Sometimes, no matter how ridiculous it can be, sometimes, and you got to approve of what they're telling you. I mean, you got to get them communicated in with you uh, because if you, you know, if you kick trash can across the floor and tell them that's the dumbest idea you ever had, they're not going to come back to you and say, you know, I got this problem. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I know nobody in here's ever done that, probably. Mostly not. Uh, you got to be inspirational, and what you're what you're talking about, you know, with safety. You know, we got a big safety culture now, don't we, JJ? This is good. And uh, you, you got to inspire them to do safety. You know, uh, with an area, you know, you got to have their PPE on their H2S monitors, their glasses, hard hats, steel toe boots. You got GPS on their truck. You have to show them that you live what you're talking about. You got to inspire them to do more. Trust. Trust has got to be the key, one of the key factors. Nobody wants to work with someone they can't trust. You know, my employees, if they can't trust me, they're never going to come to me. They're never going to do anything but talk bad about me and probably the rest of the group. Uh, and we also have uh, lead by example. That's probably one of the biggest characteristics for uh, most of us. If you want your guys to do good, wear their PPD, you got to wear it all the time yourself, whether you believe in it or not. You know, we don't have much H2S out there, but our bosses told us everywhere we go, we got to have our H2S monitor on or hard hat, steel toe boots, and safety glasses anywhere except in your office. So that he wants to change the culture, and you got to inspire him to do more. Uh, you got to have some uh, knowledge of what you're doing, some uh, uh, basic understanding of their job. You don't have to be the expert of it, uh, but you do have to understand what they're doing. I mean, you can't be a master of every task out there. Now, some of you probably can, but I can't. I can't be the master of uh, pump jacks and fracking and all that stuff, but I have knowledge of it. And I share it with them. And we always want to put people in that are smarter than us. Correct. I mean, that's the, the key is actually for us to work ourselves out of our job. That's exactly right, JJ. And we have to think out of the box. We, as uh, leaders, we have to think out of the box for our guys to get uh, you know, that bias part. You know, I'm middle aged and I've got a guy that's 21 in my group. You know, I can't, you know, he's uh, has a little bit of problem every now and then coming in on time, which I never have that problem. And I got to figure out why he's doing it and get him to, you know, quit doing it. You know, if he comes in late one minute, to me, that's the same as coming in late an hour. Boy, you're tough. Yes, but I agree. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. He's late, right? That's important. That's How do you, uh, in, this, in the Leadership Center culture, if I work for you or work for anybody in here, and I have an idea, uh, how are you going to handle it? It might be a stupid idea, but it's an idea out of the box. It might seem like a stupid idea. Maybe it even is. Well, you got to sit down with them, talk to them, ask them exactly where they're coming from. You just didn't think it's stupid, then you just, you just, you're not okay. on the same path. Okay. And what if you think it's a, something to be considered? Uh, you check into it, see if it's workable. Work and take him, 